Fossil fuels make energy, energy for people to live. In the process of producing energy, heat trapping gases, including carbon dioxide, are released into the atmosphere. We know this is causing the planet's temperature to rise, but what will the world look like in a hundred years? And what effects will a warming planet have on our ecosystem? To help answer this question, Pat McGonigal and his research team are looking into the future. They are simulating conditions of a world much richer in carbon dioxide and watching if and how it alters wetland ecosystems. What happens when wetlands go away? Because they're going away now. What happens is that you lose the habitat wetlands provide. You also lose their ability to buffer coastal infrastructure, homes and so forth against storm surges. A case in point is Hurricane Katrina, which caused a more severe storm surge than it would have if the marshes that had been there 100 years earlier had still been in place. The wetlands along the Chesapeake Bay still protect us from storms and flooding. McGonagall's team has set up a series of miniature time capsules, chambers with varying amounts of nutrients and gases, to test what could happen to this important ecosystem in the future. What we're trying to do here is to simulate the world the way it'll be by the year 2100. For example, we know by the end of the century that carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere are going to be much higher than they are now. And so we use those chambers to raise the carbon dioxide concentration around the plants to the year 2100. And then we look to see how the plants grow, whether they grow faster or slower, or maybe there's no difference. If the plants grow faster with more carbon dioxide, then perhaps they would be able to survive when warmer global temperatures cause sea levels to rise. These plants can drown. They need oxygen just like we do, and if the water's too deep, they just can't get it. If the plants drown, then the wetland falls apart and goes from being wildlife habitat to open water. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is pumped into the chambers in order to see if the wetland grasses grow faster than normal. If they can't, they might not be able to keep up with projected sea level rise and drown. So the CO2 is coming from tanks up by the shed and it's fed into a blower here that draws air from up here and sends it through the chamber and out the top. The ensuing concentration is what similar to what we'd expect to see in the future. So this one would have a total length of 142 centimeters. The team measures the difference between plants inside the CO2 enhanced chambers and the plants outside the chambers. You can see these plants inside this elevated chamber are averaging around 160 centimeters in height, whereas these plants outside that are not getting the extra CO2 are averaging probably around 120 centimeters. So you might think that there's about a, say that there's about a 40 centimeter increase. The results for a world of increased CO2 show the plants do grow faster with more carbon dioxide both above the ground and under the ground as well. The plants built new soil, which increases their chance of survival as sea level rises. The question was, if you give them more CO2, carbon dioxide, will they grow faster? That was the original question. And we found that the answer to that is yes. But a world 100 years from now will also have increased nitrogen levels in the ocean. When CO2 and nitrogen are pumped into the chambers, the results are different. And when we combine the two, the soil rises some, but not as much as if it's carbon dioxide all by itself. The wetland's ability to grow fast enough to keep up with sea level rise is greatly diminished. And so while the carbon dioxide is a very strong positive effect on the marsh, the effect of the nitrogen in terms of elevation is a little harder to understand and seems like it may not always be beneficial for marshes that are faced with rising sea level. To be more certain of the effects of higher CO2 and nitrogen levels on wetlands, 
The team simulates a world with rising sea levels, placing some of the plants below the surface of the water. With this experiment, what we want to do is see how well plants can compete even if the sea level were to rise. Above the surface, the wetlands do fine, but when both CO2 and nitrogen are pumped into the chambers, the buildup of marsh peat beneath the surface slows down. Over a few decades, this could mean that the marsh would eventually drown and disappear. One thing that we do see is that the CO2 helps the marsh grow more, and the nitrogen might do the exact opposite. All the nitrogen helps these plants, you know, they look more healthy when they have nitrogen, and a lot of times they're bigger. But the thing is, underneath, they're not getting the same nut nutrition, and it's not building peat from the ground level. The native plant species are not thriving in this enriched environment, and they have a new threat to their survival that is already present in the wetland, the invasive plant species, Phragmites. Yeah, the maddening thing about studying climate change, or actually what we call global change, is that there's so many things changing at the same time. There's the composition of the atmosphere, the temperature of the planet, the composition of the water, and then there's the composition of the plant communities. That is, the plants that you see around me now will not be the same plants that dominate this marsh in a few decades. As sea level rises, will the marsh simply drown and disappear? Or will new plants like Phragmites take over? So this is the common reed Phragmites australis. This is the world's most widely distributed flowering plant and it's found in every continent except for Antarctica. Now interestingly, it's a very aggressive plant. It can grow up to around 16 to 20 feet tall. And as Phragmites invades, it's actually changing the vertical distribution of the plant canopy, where we have Phragmites growing very tall to the native plant community, which is a short stature community. When Phragmites invades, it changes the type of organisms that can live here. So we can no longer have the same birds, the same fish, and the same shrimp that would like this low stature community. Phragmites is a super species. That is, some of the plants in this marsh respond very strongly to carbon dioxide, but not nitrogen. Others flip that around. Phragmites is different because it responds strongly to both of those factors at the same time, elevated CO2 and nitrogen. And so we're thinking that global change, at least in the form of elevated CO2 and nitrogen, may particularly favor this invasive species over the native species that are in the marsh. With or without the domination of the invasive Phragmites, the question still remains. In the future, will this be an ecosystem capable of harboring life and protecting us? And in fact, right now we are actively using our data to develop what we think are very robust models that will answer the question of whether these marshes will be here in the future.